Hey there, today we're going to walk through the process of downloading DeepSeek onto your local machine and then integrating it directly into a Python script. I'll be doing this on Windows, but it should be possible on Mac and Linux as well. If you're familiar with LLMs like ChatGPT, you're probably used to interfacing with them through a web UI where we can prompt and then have it return a nice formatted text to us. This is great for help with coding, constructing gym routines, and just general ad hoc tasks. But let's say you had a task that you'd like to automate with the help of LLMs. I'll show you how we can interface through a local install of DeepSeek using Python, and then we'll walk through two very basic use cases on processing data through LLMs. Now, just a quick note, you are going to need a beefy enough machine to run DeepSeek locally. If you don't have access to a powerful computer, then you'll likely need to use an API for DeepSeek or one of the other popular LLMs. However, these are not always free depending on which one you use, and of course, if data privacy is of any concern to you, then you need to keep in mind that any data you send through an external API is not necessarily private data anymore. Alright, so first things first, we're going to go ahead and head over to olama.com, where you're going to want to download olama. This is an open source tool that allows you to use LLMs on your local machine. So go ahead and click download, and just download the one that corresponds to your operating system. Once you've downloaded the file, go ahead and run the installation process and wait for it to finish. Let's go ahead and navigate to DeepSeek R1's page on the Olama library. From here, you'll be able to get the command that will install DeepSeek onto your local computer. One thing to note here is that there's actually different models offered, each with different degrees of memory required. The more memory, the more robust the model will be. Go ahead and open the command prompt. You can search for it using your Windows key. And then once your command prompt is open, go ahead and paste that command that you got from the library page of DeepSeek R1. Once you hit enter, Olama will begin to install the model. This will likely take some time, but once you're done, you should come up with something like this. From here, you'll be able to play around with the model on the command line, and here I actually prompt it to introduce itself. You can see that it produced a response, along with the background reasoning that it used to get there. And just as another quick test, I'll ask it to tell me a little bit about the Pokemon franchise, and it'll go ahead and do just that. So we got DeepSeek running on our local machine, now let's use Python to interface with it. To do that, we're going to use the Olama Python library, and you can find the GitHub repository here. Scrolling down, we'll see that to use this library, we're going to need Olama to be installed and running, which we already took care of, and then here's some installation instructions, which I'll walk you through. For now, let's go ahead and copy what we see in the usage block. Now, go ahead and open up your favorite IDE, or whatever you use to code in Python. In my case, I'll be using VS Code inside a Python notebook. First, let's go ahead and install the Olama Python library. Because it exists in PyPy, this is going to be as simple as just doing a pip install. I'll show you how to do it in a notebook in a pretty safe way, but otherwise, you can of course do this from the command line or whatever tool you choose to use. I've already installed mine, so I'm going to go ahead and skip this step, but feel free to pause the video and then come back when it's ready. So with everything running, let's go ahead and create a new code chunk. We're going to paste in what we got from the GitHub, and then we're going to go ahead and run this and see if it works. And while it's running, I'll go ahead and explain what everything does. Here we're calling the model, which in this case is our DeepSeek R1 model that we've installed locally. Our role is going to be the user, in other words, we're the person prompting the model, and then the content is going to be the question that we actually want to ask the model. So in this case, the sample test is just asking the model, why is the sky blue? And then here's its response. Let's take a look at the string that was output and see its contents. The first thing to note are these think dividers. This is essentially the model explaining the reasoning for how it came to the conclusion that it's going to give us. After that, we can go ahead and see the outcome. It's going to explain why the sky is blue. It's going to go ahead and print both of these twice, and that's just because the sample code wanted to show us different ways to access these fields. Let's go ahead and clear this output, and then I'm going to go ahead and create a new code chunk. I'm going to import RE, which is the regular expression functions that come built in with Python, and then I'm also going to define a new function, which I'm going to call AskDeepSeek. The function is going to take in four parameters. The first is going to be the input content. And this is simply just the text that we're going to put into the LLM and ask it to do something with. In other words, it's going to be whatever the user prompts them to do. Next is our system prompt. And if you've never played around with this feature in LLMs, it essentially is background information that we can give to our LLM that will mold it into something that'll better fit our use case. If you're a little confused, hang tight. And I think once you see it in action, it'll make sense. The next two are going to be optional parameters. The first is going to be a Boolean indicator called DeepThink. And this is just going to indicate whether we care to see the background logic that the LLM is using to produce an answer. If you only care about the final answer, you can set this to false. But in my experience, LLMs usually require quite a bit of prompt engineering to get right. So knowing how the LLM is thinking about a problem is actually really helpful in designing your prompts and improving over iterations. And lastly, the print log flag will just go ahead and print everything to the console so we can see it work in real time for the sake of practice. 
Let's go ahead and write a modified version of the chat response object that we saw above in the sample that we took from GitHub. In our messages list, we're going to go ahead and add in a new dictionary. In this case, we're going to add a new role. It's going to be system, and then the content is going to be the system prompt that I previously described. Apart from that, we're just going to put a variable instead of hard coding what the user will prompt. We're going to extract the response in the same way above, and then we're going to go ahead and print it out if we have that print log flag set to true. Now let's go ahead and use regular expressions to extract out what is the deep think or the background reasoning behind what the LLM is doing versus the actual answer that it provides us. Because they included those think dividers, this regular expression is actually going to be pretty simple. What this means here is just find all the text that is within those dividers. We're going to use the re.findall to do that, and then because findall returns a list, we'll go ahead and join the list and then use the strip function to make it nice and clean and remove all the white space. Now let's gather all the text that is not part of the deep think. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to find all the text within those think dividers, but we're just going to replace it with an empty string. Separating out the background logic versus the outcome will make it very easy on us as we try to process data. And then at the end of the function, we'll go ahead and return either just the response if that's all that we're asking for, or if we also have the deep think included, then we'll return a tuple, the first part of the tuple being the response, and the second being the background logic or the deep think text. Using this function, we'll now have a much cleaner way to interface with our LLM. Of course, this isn't the only way you could do it, and you're free to modify my function or create something entirely different depending on your needs. Now, let's walk through two use cases that are going to be very simple, but hopefully they'll help you wrap your head around how you might process data through these LLMs. For these use cases, we're going to be using two separate data sets that we can play around with. I've constructed both of these, and I'll leave them in the description so you're free to follow along. The first is going to be a sample of YouTube comments that have been left on my videos, and then the second is going to be a Pokemon data set. Let's suppose that I was interested in how well received a certain video of mine was, and I wanted to give it a score so that I could compare it against other videos. This is what's known as a sentiment analysis, where we try to assign an emotional tone to a piece of text and classify it as either positive, negative, or neutral. LLMs are quite powerful here, as they can better understand the nuance behind a piece of text, as opposed to traditional methods that usually just rely on labeling certain words as either good or bad. Let's go ahead and make a new code chunk, and then I'm going to go ahead and import my data frame, which I'm going to use pandas to do. So we're going to do pandas.readcsv, and then if you choose to follow along, go ahead and download the file, and then just point it to wherever it exists on your computer. When we run this code chunk, you'll see a data frame that looks like this. We can see that each row is a comment, where we have the video ID, we have the text itself, and then we also have a timestamp. What I want to do is I want to assign a score from negative 1 to positive 1 for each of these comments. And then at the end, if I wanted to, I could aggregate all the comments for a video and assign that video a overall score. So let's use DeepSeek to actually look at each of the comments and assign the score. So let's go ahead and create a new code chunk. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to write out a prompt, which I'll call system prompt sentiment. And this is going to be the prompt that we're passing into our LLM as the context for what we want to do. So I'm going to tell the LLM that it's going to be provided with a YouTube comment. I'm going to ask it to rate the YouTube comment on a scale of negative 1, which is very negative, to positive 1, which is very positive, and 0 is going to indicate a neutral sentiment. I want it to report the scores in increments of 0.1, so it has a little bit more granularity. Now explicitly, I'm going to tell it to only answer with a sentiment score, and not to include any other words or explanations before or after the score. The reason I'm doing this is because if I want to eventually aggregate all this together, I'm going to need to have it in a numeric format, and it's going to be a problem if it assumes that it can say whatever it wants. I'm also going to ask it not to include the plus symbol, so it'll be easier to clean up later. Lastly, I'll ask it to look out for any comments that might be seen as negative on the surface, but are actually meant to be endearing. So in this case, things like sarcasm or other little quirks of the human language that traditional sentiment analysis tools would not be very good at picking up at, but LLMs can do just fine. So now that our LLM will have a little bit more context than what we want it to do, let's go ahead and figure out how we can actually apply this to our data set. I want to assign a score to each comment in the data set, so we're going to create a new column and we're going to call it LLM sentiment. We're going to place our YouTube comments text column, and because we want to iterate through each one, we're going to use the apply function. And to use our ask deep seat function, we're just going to pass this little lambda function. We're going to iterate through each of the comments. We're going to pass it into the ask deep seat function. We're going to pass in the system prop sentiment that we have right here. And then because I'm only returning back to one column, I'm going to set the deep think equal to false, so it just returns the output. Now earlier I said that it would actually be a good idea to include deep think, because if something went wrong and something's not scored the way we assumed it would be, well, we can look at the reasoning the LLM took and iterate from there. If we need to adjust the prompt, we'll go ahead and do that. 
So here's how you can actually include a column for each, one for the score itself, and then one for the background logic behind it. DeepThink is automatically set to true, so we don't need to include anything here, but because we're returned a tuple, we're gonna do one more apply, and this is gonna turn it into a series, which will make it fit nicely into a column. So let's go ahead and run this and give it a shot to see what it does. And because LLMs are pretty computationally intensive and take some time, I'm just gonna go ahead and run the one with DeepSeq on, and then I'm also gonna limit our data set to just the first 10 rows. Go ahead and make sure that our function is initialized up here. And now let's scroll down and run the function to see what it actually does in our data frame. Performance is gonna vary based on your hardware, and in my case, this actually took quite a while, so we'll go ahead and speed up until we get the output. So as you can see, our code chunk finished, and it went ahead and printed out everything as it was going, but let's go ahead and create a new code chunk where we can see the output. So scrolling down, you can see that we have a new column, LLM sentiment. It is a numerical score as I described, and we can just quickly spot check this. So these are pretty positive comments right here. Gets a 0.9. We can have a thanks a lot. Gets a 0.8. And then we have this comment that starts with honestly one of the worst tutorials. That one gets scored a negative. We also have our other column containing the deep think reasoning behind those scores. So if we look at a score and we see something doesn't look quite right, we can look at the reasoning that LLM took. And if we need to adjust the prompt, we can go ahead and do that. Let's consider another use case for our LLM. Suppose that I had a big data set on Pokemon and I wanted to build a web app for players to use to help them when they play the game. Throwing out a bunch of numbers could be pretty intimidating for new players, so at the top, I want to include a brief summary of each Pokemon so that a player could read it and just get a short but basic understanding of the kind of Pokemon that they're currently looking at. Let's go ahead and read in our Pokemon data. If you're following along, it's included in the description, and I'm going to limit it to the first nine Pokemon. Those are going to be our three starters, but if you want to go ahead and run it on the entire set, well, be my guest. Printing out this data frame, We'll see that we'll get the first three starter evolution lines, so Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle, and then we'll get a ton of information on our Pokemon that is multiple columns wide. Let's go ahead and write out our prompt, and then I'll make any adjustments to the data if we need to. I'm gonna let DeepSeek know that I'm building an app designed around Pokemon, and it's meant for the users to scroll through each Pokemon and look at their various stats and abilities. I'm going to ask it to take the individual Pokemon's data in the form of a JSON format. So notice here that I'm specifying the input type we're going to give it. And then from there, I want it to write a three to five sentence summary about the Pokemon's battle capabilities. I'll ask if it can address their strengths and weaknesses. And then I'll also reaffirm what the output should be. So in this case, it needs to be a string that's formatted as a paragraph and should not exceed five sentences. Just so it doesn't get confused, I remind it that it is for the Pokemon video games and not the cards of the TV show and then ask it to keep a few things in mind about the structure of the input, such as the name field being the name of the Pokemon and the main identifier, some of the stats such as the attack, defense, etc., if the Pokemon has a mega evolution, and then what the evolution field might be. Fans of the Pokemon games would probably want to add a lot more context here, but for the sake of keeping things simple, we're going to leave it at that. Now, we told our DeepSeek model that we're going to supply our data in the form of a JSON format, so let's actually go and create that in our data set, to do that, we're going to create a new column and we're going to call it LLM input. From there, we're going to call our Pokemon DF, the dot to dict function, and we're going to orient it with records. And once we run this, you'll be able to see something like this at the very end. We have all of our data in this JSON format. And just so you can see that it's working, we can go ahead and call the first entry of the LLM input. And you can see that that column contains a Python dictionary. Now, technically our LLM won't accept a Python dictionary as a valid input. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cast it into a string first. So once our dictionaries are all casted into strings like this, we can then go ahead and pass it in. Now that our data is formatted correctly, we're gonna go ahead and run our ask deep seek function and we can pretty much do it nearly the same way we did in our sentiment analysis. The only thing that's different is we're going to change this name of the column to the LLM summary since we're not looking at a sentiment. We're going to make sure that we're pointing at the LLM input column to do the apply function and then make sure that we're pointing at our Pokemon data frame. Let's go ahead and run it and then see what it provides back to us. Let's go ahead and create a new code chunk and then printing out our data frame. If we scroll all the way to the right, you can see that we have our LLM input, LLM summary, and LLM deep think. The summary column looks like it's filled out pretty nicely but let's go ahead and print a few just to make sure. So if we do zero, which is gonna to correspond to Bulbasaur, 
we can see that it has its description written out in a paragraph form, which is pretty nice. If we do three, that should correspond to Charmander. We can see something very similar. And looking at index six, we can look at Squirtle. Like I mentioned, these are pretty simple use cases, and to make the answers a little bit more useful, you'd probably want to do some prompt engineering and add a little bit more context. But hopefully these exercises provided a bit of inspiration on how you can process your own data through these LLMs and do something cool with it.